What is going on, everybody? Bobby Fowler, the man, Eric Sheet Tabor. We are going to be talking through a very, very early look at week. What is it? What are we at now? Week six? Week yep. six in the NFL. Um, I, uh, I, I've had a couple of weeks where I was out in places I couldn't play, so I haven't been able to play much. Um, I had a really good week a couple weeks ago. She sounds like you had another good week this week, so hopefully we can keep things going in the right direction. Um, any sort of overall, like you said in pre-show, I know it's a, you know it's hard because we're gonna go we're gonna go game by game, but uh, like you said, it, it feels like a smaller slate than it really is, right? Yeah, I mean, it reminds me of week one, you know, uh, where you got a couple of games and you gotta you gotta earn the content here. You got you gotta wait through a lot a lot of fishy games to get to to get to the good stuff. But we'll uh, we'll get there. Um, and uh, keep in mind that in those weeks, it weren't necessarily those games that paid that, that won all the money. Right. So uh, we'll 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 see what we can make of this. But it does does look like some uh, some early u- ugliness. But we'll uh, we'll see. I'm sure that there's some sneaky stuff that you'll be able to turn me on to, and vice versa. So let's see what happens. All right. Well, let's uh, let's get into it. Uh, starting off with San Francisco, Atlanta. Um, this is, you know, I can understand the Jeff Wilson thing as, as we sort of speculated about for, for the showdown slate, um, uh, a couple weeks back that, that, uh, against the Rams that Tevin Coleman would start to play a role. Well, he certainly played a role on, on, I mean, he had, had two touchdowns at 21 fantasy points. He's not the guy I'm, I'm thinking of, but it does take away a little bit from the Jeff Wilson. Now he's got sort of the split back role thing with the, with the Coleman, I still think Wilson is completely uh, a solid play and I don't have any problem with anybody else from this game. I think Kittle would be my next favorite, but I'm not actively trying to play anybody else in this game uh, outside of those two Wilson and uh, potentially uh, George Kittle. Yeah. So on a slate like this, where you don't have all that much, I think you have to squint a little bit to find stuff. And I think right off the bat, I think this is a decent, decent place to start on the san francisco side just because i mean it's 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 gonna be in a dome atlanta's defense is not great and san francisco has some explosive players you know so so i think that uh again it's not going to be the best game but i think as far as secondary games i think it's certainly reasonable mm-hmm. i think that jeff wilson i he's another one i was kind of shocked wasn't as owned as i thought he was going to be um, he was 18% owned or something like that. I really thought that he and Fernet would both be 30. Um, t- didn't work out that way. Everybody, everybody, what, you know, this is, l- listen, this is interesting. You know, th- I talk about this a lot. I mean, what happens when players get sharp is they see who, who they think is going to be high owned and they intentionally try to find low owned plays, making the better plays lower owned. You know what I mean? And then this, this kind of like GTO ownership state of being like kind of converges at some point you know so so uh i think there's no reason why jeff wilson isn't a good play again i mean he gets 100 percent of the snaps however last week it was it was it was we got the return of Jeff and tevin coleman as you were saying however even with not getting 100 percent of the snaps he's still 17 for 120 you know 23 <laughs> fantasy points you know um guys doing it man so Definitely think he's in play. Um, I have a question. Is this sort of – this is almost like Tevin Coleman revenge, isn't it? Didn't he Didn't he play in Atlanta or something like that? Well, if you want know. to go that far, then it's really – Well, it's the coach's revenge then if you really want to go that way. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. But how do, you, how do you get the revenge when uh, it elevated know. you to the top of your career and play, you played in the Super Bowl for them? So I don't know. Um, but right. but I, I do think the coach – I mean, I, I do think that, that, that San Francisco wins this game – uh, I, can't, I have yeah. said, people have said this about Atlanta. I think San Francisco is going to win this game pretty easily, um, even though Atlanta has been frisky so far. I really and, and, I, and I'm good with the Wilson thing. The one thing that's, that scares me is is playing pass catching running backs or playing non pass catching running. Like he doesn't have a catch this season, and San Francisco will use their running backs. Like Coleman even Coleman is already has more receptions than him in one game, um, which was really how many three. Um, so it worries me a little bit. They're not using him at all. They're not using him at all in that way. And 6,200 is, is not like crazy cheap. And I'd rather get, you know, he's a play, but I don't feel like it's anything's automatic for me here. So we can move on if you I like. Mean, I think, I, I, I think, oh, well, just one, let me just finish saying, I, I do think that again, that, that, that some of these San Francisco skill guys are in play. I think Kittle has not had a blow up game yet. Um, and I think that that could happen in a game like this. Um, mm-hmm. But again, 
only because for lack of anything else, am I even talking about this game? So let's, we can move on. I, I, yeah, but I, I agree with the Kittle too, for sure. Um, Tampa Bay and Pittsburgh. I uh, actually am not even close. I have. Oh, I'm New so England. sorry. You're a different, yeah, they're all the same time. So it's really hard yeah. for me to try and track when I'm looking at my other screen. So New England, Cleveland. Okay. Um, this is a very. Okay. So, so Cleveland can't stop the run. Um, I, I think that we should be playing Ramondre Stevenson a ton here. Um, I, I prefer him actually over Wilson. I think those are the two two guys I'm looking at as, you know, those mid-tier running backs that sort of seem to be on every winning lineup these days. And and I'm okay if anybody wants to 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 play, you know, a Jacoby Myers or something like that. Um certainly had a had a big week last week. Um and I and on the 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 the, the Cleveland side though, I just can't get to anything that I that I quite want to play. Maybe 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 you could argue for Kareem Hunt and Amari Cooper. I'm just not all that excited about it, but I, it is a little bit, you know, no, I am noticing just that Cleveland's played in some high scoring games this year and, and playing the Patriots. Uh, I understand that the, the, the score total will be lower, but I, I sort of felt like I might want to do something here, but I, I personally am basically just Stevenson um, and potentially Jacoby Myers are really my only levels of interest. Yeah. So what, what, what Bobby's kind of, uh, you know, was alluding to is, is, is Damian Harris is out. Um, Sorry. So. It's Enough. now while while people were worried last week. Listen, they, they made both of these guys chalk last week somehow. Like like, it's so rare you know, have two mm-hmm. two running backs in the same backfield be chalk. They were both over ten percent on because um, nobody's exactly sure who was who was going to be. And this week with Damian Harris out, I mean, Ramondre Stevenson is just going to he's going to get stuffed into lineups. I think I have, I haven't done run projections yet, so I don't even know how he's going to look. Can't imagine him not looking great. Um, yeah. So uh, yeah, that's the first thing. Uh, the second thing is, I know defense is whatever, but what's this, but but Nick Chubb does it every week. Um, so I'm not going to say no. I mean, he's over 20 fantasy points every game. So I mean, what 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 am I doing? Uh, so again, I don't know exactly how the how lineup construction is going to work this week with other stuff, but I'm going to say this every week that Nick Chubb is in play and he's always going to be no, no owned. Uh, that's just the way it's going to be. Um, I now think I'm going to get to Myers this time and overall, it just doesn't seem like the type of game that is going to blow up. Um, but I do like, uh, I do like Madre Stevenson and I would, I'm just always going to have Chubb in play. Yep. Um, I understand the argument. I, 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 I have a hard time getting to Chubb at 8200 against this defense, but they're a good running team. I mean, they've had literally the nut matchups you know, for the most part yep, that's um, true. That's so true. far. And, and, but, but I agree. I mean, but the only thing with Chubb at eight, you know, how he needs to get to 30 plus, I think if you're going to play him at 200. So that's the only thing I would, I would, I would warn people about. All right. Um, what you got next? Uh, New England, uh, New York and, and Green. I have, I have, I have, Green, I have Green, I have Green Bay Jets, Green Bay coming off the loss to the Giants um, coming home. I've just seen, I've just seen this, uh, too many times in my life. You know, you have the Jets coming off the win against Miami and the Green Bay coming off the loss against the Giants, going into Lambeau Field. I think Green, I, how many times are we going to have to see this? Like, Raj, they play a bad game, they come home and they win by 80. You know what I mean? Like, that's right. that, that, that's what I think is going to happen. Uh, not that I think they're going to win by 80, but I think that they're going to, you know, they're going to, they're going to put it on them. And uh, now, how that's going to translate to fantasy points, not exactly sure. Um, Alan Lazard at 6K doesn't sound like somebody I want to play. Uh, Romeo Dobbs at 4,800, that that seems a lot more reasonable. Um, Tanyan at 3,600 looks – I don't know what the rest of the tight end slate looks like, but just uh, in a vacuum, that looks like a good play. And the running backs, I don't know about it. I could do 7,600 Aaron Jones because I still think there's a little bit of a timeshare there. Um, but I think that – I mean, I've just seen this too often. I think Rogers is going to have a big game. I think he's going to get one to uh, Dobbs. He's going to get one to Lazard, maybe get one to Tunyon. And then uh, on the other side of this game, I think that uh, Green Bay doesn't exactly inspire their defense. wasn't hasn't been that great. So uh, I'm, I think that the Jets can do something as a run back here. I think Brees Hall uh, is, is, uh, is decent. I think that the wide receivers pick one, Elijah Moore, Garrett Wilson, or whatever it is. So maybe maybe this game could be, could be sneaky. Uh, maybe maybe this could be the game, but I because I, I definitely I definitely think the Packers 
offense is very live in this spot. Yeah. Um, sort of struggling with this one myself because um, I don't think the Packers are very good. And I've been sort of pretty adamant about that this whole season, but I agree with you about the situation and circumstance. And I, I, I think the Jets, I was going to say, we're, we're better than people think, but now everybody thinks the Jets are really good because they're three and two. <laughs> um, I, I like Brees Hall a lot. Um, I think he's, it's pretty, it's become pretty clear. It's his job. If there's a bunch of pass catching downs though, you could see it go the other way. Like it's kind of weird how it just depends on the situation. I mean, you had the two touchdowns for Carter that took took Hall away from having just a monster game. Part of it because I believe Hall was tackled at the one. They then they switched him out because he just ran for seventy nine yards. Um, but you you know, Brees Hall almost had a, just a monster monster game, and and uh, he's he's right there in that same category of that six you know fifty eight hundred to sixty two hundred running back. Um, so I like Brees Hall. Uh, I'm still curious to see how it clicks between Zach Wilson and Garrett Wilson because he was pretty clearly becoming the number one but certainly hasn't seen the same target share with uh, Zach Wilson at quarterback. Yeah. Uh, Davis and Moore are, are both really cheap as well. Um, he has at least some history with Davis. I don't think I really want to play Wilson and, and try to get this full stack, but I kind of like the idea of playing Hall with, with something on the other side, but Aaron Jones is expensive at 7,600. I think this is still a reasonable matchup. He hasn't been great this year in terms of production because AJ Dillon's there and still getting a decent amount of work, although he didn't have much the other day against the Jets, uh, the Giants, I mean. Um, I can't play guys like Tanya and Tanya. I mean, get, get, score 10 fantasy points once and maybe I'll talk and we'll talk. You know what I mean? Um, <laughs> hasn't done a single thing this year. And every, 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 every week, everybody recommends him. And I just, I'm just not going to do that. <laughs> That's fair enough. That's fair enough. Um, but I, I, uh, I do think that the guy who I would look the most at here would probably be Dobbs. Um, even after some subpar games, I think that at 4,800 right. value there, but I, I think Brees Hall is probably the best play in this game. And, uh, again, I, I don't think I'm, I, I, if there was a time to do the Rogers thing, you have cheap receivers. You could play Lazard with Dobbs, Lazard with Cobb, Dobbs with Cobb, something like that. And you've got Rogers at 6,100. It's a pretty cheap stack to run back with Hall and you could have a really expensive secondary stack. So I'm open to this game in general, uh, as being a game I, I might focus on a little bit more come Sunday. But, uh, I, I again, like you said, I, I, I sort of think that the, the Jets are, uh, the, the, the Packers might, might end up beating up on them in this one. Um, all right. You ready to move on to the next one? Yeah, it's like to say. I don't know if people are watching this, but uh, Billy's off to a good start, getting two off of Max Fried in the top of the first. That's good. It's good news. Oh, and hey, there you go. News for those people. Any home uh, runs? Uh, no, nah, like five points, five points, five points. You know, double, hey, double that, army. That'll, that'll work. work. That'll, that'll, that'll work in the postseason, man. That's that's a nice start for you. And and LeMay, who's out, by the way. He, um, oh, he's thank out. You. oh, interesting. Okay. Good to know. Thank I, you. So, so uh, Jacksonville, um, uh, Jacksonville versus Indianapolis. I have next. Um, I don't know what to make of this game. Um, first of all, what's obviously important is uh, Taylor's uh, uh, status. Based on the coach's comments uh, last week, it says that they're optimistic return this week. Uh, so that would obviously be very good for them um jacksonville put on a just a very bad performance against what we both said was a very pesky houston team mm -hmm. um houston uh houston got it done the jaguars totally shot themselves in the foot at the end of that game the terrible roughing the passer call which would have stopped the drive and maybe they would have walked down to win but whatever um so jacksonville all well, now the uh, the let's put a hold on their lombardi trophy for the time being <laughs> everybody was giving them a couple weeks ago um they uh so they're giving they time they'll be okay they lost their last two um they're going into indianapolis and 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 this is a big time revenge game because indy went into jacksonville and lost 24 to nothing um before um yep so uh i think indianapolis is probably the team but as far as dfs goes again i think if taylor plays i think he's i think he's too cheap at 8k um and i think that's where i'm going to start uh i don't think i'm going to well, I shouldn't say that. I mean, I, maybe I'll do the Pittman thing. I'm not sure. Um, but listen, I don't know how many times, and I invented this guy. Uh, we're going to have the Alec Pierce uh, last <laughs> game, nine targets, eight receptions, 16 fantasy points. Not the worst, you know, with uh, with youth upside. Look at him. He looks like he's 10 years old. I mean, he's, he, <laughs> he's certainly in play. Um, and then on the other side of the ball, I think you go – 
Yeah, you can go right back to the same dudes that busted this past week. Like you want to play Zay Jones at 2,400, at 4,200, or Marvin Jones Jr. at 46. All these guys are cheap. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, and Christian Kirk also. Last week, you know who the big surprise was as far as ownership goes was, was uh, James Robinson. Um, he ended up like 15, 20% owned in some places, um, despite having no projection. I mean, of, of that was worth mentioning. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's one like that every week. The week before it worked out. The week before, everybody bid up uh, Rashad Penny and he smashed. Mm -hmm. um, this past week, everybody. Well, that's a very different situation because James Robinson is at best, and he's probably the, he's the, he's probably their second running back, James Robinson, in reality. And. Uh, Rashad Penny had nobody else who was even getting carries that week when he was going. You know what I mean? They didn't even yeah. have Walker healthy that well, week. I'm just, I'm, I'm, yeah. Sorry. I was just saying from the perspective of what we talked about, about like about ownership and how people just sometimes outsmart themselves and things like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I, I guess this game has some potential, but I certainly don't want to target it. No, I have no. Yeah. This is one of the least interesting games for DFS on the slate to me. Um, and there's a lot of them that are uninteresting. This is definitely one. Um, Taylor and Christian Kirk, I have no problem with. If you wanted to dumpster dive-ish and play Zay Jones and Alec Pierce, go ahead. Um, I think Evan Ingram is a better play than other tight ends we've mentioned. I think that he would be the other guy to look at. And just worth noting that ATN, it's really hard to figure out what they're doing. They took this guy in the first round. I mean, they're going to play him a ton. Uh, maybe they're giving Yeah, they'll get him there. But, I mean, he had – he had 15 touches last week, like, and and I had a pretty decent week actually. And 15 touches to James Robinson's 12. Um, but we're not going to be playing these guys as long as they're splitting carries, in my opinion. If I did, it would be ATM. Um, all right, uh, Minnesota and Miami. Is that right? Yeah. Um, yes. Okay. This is this is a game uh, you could do some things, right, Sheets? What do you think? What? Give me your thoughts on this one. Yep. Well, I it. it well, you need Bridgewater to play for openers. Um, it looks it looks like, I mean, who knows with with with, going, with the concussion stuff? I mean, just really, who knows? But mm -hmm. presuming that he's going to play at the end of at the end of this, um, and if he plays, he's got he's got two really really great great targets. Uh, Minnesota, um, they had some, you know, they they struggled for a little while in the second half, but they got the job done and. They, you know, they have, they have one, two, they have between cook and those other two dudes. I mean, the two receivers, they have, they have three legit weapons here. I think, I guess this is the game to start off with. Right. I mean, again, this is the game where, where I, where I see upside in every position and mm -hmm. uh, maybe this game can, can, can go off and, 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 and compete with those later games. Um, so yeah, I, 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 uh, I, I was about to say, I agree. I don't even know where you, I, I'm kind of thinking <laughs> this way, what you're doing here. Is um I, I definitely think that Minnesota Miami this game is in play with all the usual guys. Yeah, it's a I guess it is, and and that's the thing is it's, it's hard it is hard to know without the quarterback for for Miami here. Um, even still the the early line has Miami as only a three point dog. I know they're at home, but um, I, I don't. I mean, I think Minnesota is the worst of the four and one teams. Oh no, the, the, them and the Giants are pretty. I, I the Giants I'll, I'll say is a little bit worse than they are. Um. But if the Vikings played a, just so you know if the Vikings played a, just so you know if the Vikings played the Giants right now and it was at Minnesota, Minnesota would be like an eight point game. Yeah, I know that's the funny part. But the funny part is my Minnesota hasn't even played well and probably should be like two and three. Um, I don't know how they snuck out. They barely snuck out one against against Andy Dalton. They barely snuck out the really Detroit. weird one against Detroit where they were dead and then they somehow won. Um, yeah, they, there's they tried a, to they tried to lose this game. They tried to lose. They tried to lose yesterday, uh, Sunday. Also in Chicago, they were killing them. It was 14 three. They were walking in for another thing, and then they missed it. They yep. missed the field goal, and they let Chicago actually take the lead in the fourth quarter. Yeah, I mean, yeah. So, so Minnesota is a. Th there's a lot of weapons here. Um, Jefferson at eight point nine is going to be really hard to afford on DK. Um, I don't think I want to do that. Miami does like to run some some more like ISO coverages because they've got that good corner, but he, I mean, he keeps getting dusted and uh, massive ceiling for Jefferson, but I, I don't know if I can do it at 8,900. I think I'd rather take a shot on Tyreek Hill and hope I, hopefully even with the, with a, any quarterback, he can hit the upside because they're going to have to look his way. Um, but it's hard, it's, it's hard to analyze this one right now. I like the idea of the game environment. There's no play that I particularly love. And I, and I do want to mention Mostert. I was, I did like that my take on that uh, before that 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 Thursday game against uh, Cincinnati. 
that I was I was saying that I think Mostert is going to take the job from Edmonds. Um, and then it seems, especially after Bridgewater came in and then Skylar Thompson, they really are letting Mostert be the be the running back because you only got one touch for Chase Edmonds last week. Um, and uh, I'm OK with Mostert. But again, I'm still a little worried about the other. I'm, I'm worried Edmonds might get a little bit more involved I'm, I'm, because they've lost the last couple of games. So Mostert is a little behind the Stevenson, a uh, little behind Stevenson, Hall and Wilson for me, but not that much, to be honest with you. I, I think you can run on this on this Minnesota defense. Uh, all right. Do you happen to see? Good. Did we go to Cincinnati, New Orleans? Did you happen to see the line on on Taysom Hill last week? Yeah, what he had 130 yards and three touchdowns. Scored 37 fantasy points. So not <laughs> as a backup quarterback. <laughs> Is he even playing this week? Taysom Hill. Oh, they're putting him back as backup quarterback now. Yeah, he's backup still. He comes in, comes in for four plays and gets like eight touchdowns. <laughs> so he gets him. I, know, I thought they were, but they, I thought he's listed as a tight end. Um, on FanDuel. Oh, maybe. Okay. Um, That's yeah. insane. Yeah, it's, it's pretty nuts. I actually don't think he's very good in general at football, but well, okay, let me rephrase. He's I don't great think, at football. He's just not a good quarterback. I, yeah, yeah, exactly. A good, good, good point. Yeah. I think what they've tried to do and they've used him in this such a way, like, he, like, sort of like, I don't know, like a, like to them a glorified Tebow, but like, they kept like acting like it was his team. And I think it really set the saints back a ways by how much they invested into him. I think they made a really big mistake on taking a championship title type of contender team and just falling like apart after drew Brees. And then obviously the injuries haven't helped them either, but anyway, we get to this game. Um, pretty, pretty low total there for the Bengals at 22.7. Um, uh, early look is this, this could be an interesting spot to target. I think um, I'm always interested in always in playing the guys, the receiving core from Cincinnati. It's very clear that everyone is trying not trying to make sure Jamar chase doesn't beat them. Um, and since week one, that hasn't, he hasn't beaten anybody. Uh, I like T Higgins here and I like Joe mix. I, well, I, I'm okay with Joe mix. I don't really like him that much. I like Kamara, but I'm getting really frustrated. If I was him, I'd be pissed off a little bit. Like, he goes off last week. He has 100 rushing yards and 100 receiving yards, and he doesn't get any of those touchdown looks down the, by the goal line. It's kind of irritates, irritating, you know what I mean? This is supposed to be your guy. So uh, my, my natural thing in this game would be potentially a Winston with a Lave or something like that. I also am open to Michael Thomas if he plays. Um, and I also think that, uh, that Kamara and Higgins would be my next two favorites. How about you? I think Kamara was – just exactly perfect last week. You know, 20, 20 rushes, 100 yards, six for six targets, almost 100 yards receiving as well. Um, no, he did, he did, I didn't, oh, yeah, he ended up with 91. That's right. He didn't have 100. Yeah, and and I mean, I don't know if it's, safe, it's fair to say Kamara would be pissed. I mean, literally every time Taysom Hill touches the ball, he scores a touchdown. I mean, like, you know, like it's, – it's, well, No, but no, but come on, man. Like you have – you're supposed to be one of the top running backs in football, and then the ball is within the five-yard line, and you literally never get a touch. Like, it just frustrates me. Sorry. I guess. Um, it happened uh, to work last but, week. But, but, Taysom Hill has been like, you know, and we've been watching this for years. Anyway, sorry, Chiefs. Go ahead. But, yeah, but, I mean, let's look. It's a, it's a dome game. Uh, Cincinnati's got, you know, uh, was, I hope T. Higgins freaking plays. It was, like, really tilting last week. I mean, he – um nobody – he nobody even mentioned anything about him being limited or whatever. He played, like, two snaps. I don't know what the hell happened to him. Um, so let's just make sure that all these guys are playing that we think are playing like Olave, Mike Thomas, whether he plays or not, T Hilligans, Landry was out last week. And then I speculated, uh, whether it be Marcus Calloway or, or Trey, Trey Smith or whatever it is. Um, the, um, uh, what was going to say so, so, and also the reality is that I don't think the Saints defense is, is, is really that great either. It hasn't been has it has not been what it's supposed to be. So I think this game can uh I think this game could deliver. I, I would prefer to have Winston back um to you know for more upside from the from the same mm-hmm. side. Um but I have no problem with playing Kamara again. Mm-hmm. Uh I I but like I said, as you just kind of pointed out, like if you play Kamara and he doesn't have if he basically had a perfect perfect game last week well see I, so I i look at it very much the other way well, i feel well, like he had a i feel like he should have had 45 or 50 last week well no no, no. my point was is that he had a perfect game last week with and, and and ran like crap with touchdowns right 
right. the non-touchdown stuff is just literally perfect, and he ran like crap with touchdowns. My point is, is that if he doesn't have exactly as perfect a game next week, and then he gets sniped again by all the Taysom Hill stuff, you're really not allowed to complain because you know it's coming. I mean, right, just, right. We've seen, we've seen all the evidence. You're right. You know, so so uh, I don't th- I don't think I can do it. I, I I'm just convinced that this is what they're doing. They're gonna just that Taysom Hill is just a touchdown man. You know what I mean? He's just the guy. And mm-hmm. until they lose a game by doing that, they're just gonna keep doing. It, you know, so so that's 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 my opinion on the the Taysom Hill sniping uh, situation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, but yeah, well, uh, that, I think this game. As as we're going through these, these games are better than I thought they were going to be. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're, there's there's little spots that are interesting, right? But it just comes down to when you click the buttons. I tried to do so, to do an early build last night just to take. I, I like to do my first very first look, and there wasn't like anything I felt great about, you know. Um, and and I, by the way, and, and and I'm glad, you know, well, I'm not glad, but good for the Saints that they won. But I I have to give. I mean, we should give. We'll talk about him in just a minute, I guess, but. I was I'm very impressed by Geno Smith and I'm really questioning how why we trust that oh that guy hasn't played football in years and if you actually look at all the games he's played since he was a Jet um, even when he was a Jet actually uh, when he wasn't when he was the the backup starter like he's actually always been good and I'm just wonder how how good these GMs really are and whether they're not willing to turn things over and if how many of these guys are really out there there's probably I'll tell you what there's probably 10 quarterbacks on the bench no there's not 10 there's probably 20 on the bench that are better than Baker Mayfield um all right baltimore and the giants uh very we get the same thing again the giants uh by the way i want to point out one last thing about the atlanta game by the way atlanta's undefeated against the spread this year even though i like the niners in that one and to cover it, it was my first thought i actually don't know if i want to stand by that atlanta's been really frisky the coach um, is apparently really good i think he is and i think they've done and, and i mean they had no patterson last week they had no pits and they were right you know they were right there um Here's my my Super Bowl my Super Bowl pick. They're still very much alive. I still have Lamar to win the MVP as well, um, and I really am always going to, especially on slates like this. I'm going to prioritize Lamar. Um, uh, th- he can just outscore every quarterback by a million points. Um, so I I want to play him with somebody, and certainly I could play him with Mark Andrews. Um, uh, Mark Andrews has been over 20, 23 three times. That very likely will be very much you know good enough at tight end uh you sort of win the position i don't know if i want that for my receiver at 7k but a tight end if you do it and you can find the receivers that hit i think that's one way to go i think rashad bateman is the other way i want to go i don't care that he didn't have a catch the other night Uh, i think the upside is still massive for him and i like the price so bateman andrews uh from from jackson are my natural looks i i don't think i'm going to do the jk dobbins thing and on the other side, you have the natural run back and, you're, you're, you know, it gets expensive, but you've got a, a guy who's been great in Barkley. The problem is we haven't really seen that ceiling. It's not a bad defense. Well, it's not as deep. A defense is probably not as bad as people thought, as, pro- as bad as people think it is. Um, and it's been worse against the pass for what it's worth, which is weird because what are we, I mean, we, we just, no, nobody's, even with the Giants winning, it's not like any of these receivers are, are doing anything at all. Um, one of them will have a game at, at a cheap price one of these days because it just kind of has to happen. But I mean, is is Daniel Bellinger the best play from the passing game side? It's really impossible, right? To try and find a receiver here that makes any sense. Sheets, you got anybody? Yeah, I do, sort of. So uh, here's the deal with here's the deal with the uh, the, the Giants. Um, by the way, Wilson Contreras bases loaded, one out, hit to a double play. Um, yes. Um, I watched that Giants game. First of all, I've been following the Giants a little more this year, and and as I mentioned before, they're actually. You know the coaches are putting in like like good game plans and like decent decent plays and stuff like that. The problem is they've had just no players. Like they've had no receivers at all. Like uh, they they don't even know who to play. Galloway is out. Tony is out, and they had nobody. And I've been waiting for them to finally at least activate Darius Slayton. And Darius Slayton was activated uh, for he had a game. He was a really good game. Um, So I think that's that that so I think that is the answer. Um, whether it's a good answer or not, I think that's the answer. You know, the Slayton and and, and Richie James and Davis Mills are going to be the guys, and the t- and the tight end's going to get his looks, and that's that's what they're going to roll with as far as skill position guys. And obviously, there's Barkley. The other thing, though, about the Giants is that, you know, while I think they, like I said, they 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 call some good games, and and I really I really believe that. I just I still don't think they're physically strong enough to deal with a team like Baltimore. You know. Um, yeah. 
And I think I think the Giants are probably going to struggle in this game. Uh, their defense is is I think defense is good enough that I don't think this game is. I think this game, in a weird way, doesn't really even become fantasy relevant. You know, I, I don't think Barkley is is particularly great play um, in this spot. Seventy seven hundred is pretty cheap though, so I. Well, it's not. It's you know, it's funny. Is it used to would it would have used to have been cheap, but Jonathan Taylor's eight K. Like it's basically uh, top end. It's a top you can spend for a running back. But I hear what you're saying though. I mean. And, you know, yeah. for, for what it could be, like, we would look at that in the past and go, you know, shouldn't that guy be like 9K now or like like, like a Christian McCaffrey? Um, but he's not. Yeah. I mean, what I was saying, what I was going to say is that, is that, is that he's, he's he looks kind of cheap. So I think he is going to get owned. Um, I don't know. I've just seen it. And look, it's, it's, it's going to be a big game at Giants Stadium. As I mentioned before, you know, the, 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 the crowd will get up for a game like this. They're a fraudulent four and one, but whatever it is, you know what I mean? Like, that's what they I know, are. But at the same time, their defense deserves some credit, man. Right. That is what they are. And coming off a Packer win, the place is going to be freaking rocking uh, against uh, Lamar. Um, I, I have I have a feeling the game is going to be kind of low scoring, though. I don't know. Um, boy, I don't know. Maybe you're right, though. Maybe you just, you just play Lamar. You play Andrews. Here's another thing I will tell you about Baltimore, which I, I, I don't believe. I didn't believe it. But the fact of the matter is, is like it or not, this Duvernay is like, he's like the man. You know what I mean? He's like, I told you, he's he's yeah. I mean, yeah. He always gets he's like at seven freaking targets. He's not like a freak. He had any three rushing attempts? Are you kidding? Right. right. <laughs> um. So he's he is he's legit. Uh, he's a legit part of Lamar stacks if that's what you want to do. You know. Mm-hmm. Um. And obviously Andrews is awesome. Uh. Bateman, let's make sure he's playing before anything else. Says he might be able to come back week six, so we have to see about that. I don't know. Maybe, 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 maybe this is a game that could deliver a little bit. Yeah, I don't. don't I, so I like it as a game that could deliver. Here's the here's the reason why I I don't like these games in general on full slates. You have two teams okay. that what is the, what do they want to do? They want to run the ball, even with their quarterback on yeah. the Giants. They want to run the ball. That all that does is slow the game down. Makes the clock go by real fast. Next thing you know, hey, the offenses both move the ball, but it's seven to three at the end of the first quarter. That's not going to win you a tournament. Right. But what does happen is you no. get a fluky play or something like that. And all of a sudden somebody's up 14, nothing. Let's say the Giants somehow go up 14, nothing or something. And we get, we get like just a button, you know, passing plays or Lamar running for 10 or 15. Cause Lamar running is a little different than, than Daniel Jones or anybody. Although Daniel Jones is a terrific runner. Lamar is just there's always that chance he's going to break a 75 yard or anytime he touches the, the ball. And I mean, he's already run for over 200, hundred yards twice. Right. This, and he's uh he's probably the best running back in football. Who's also uh, still one of the best quarterbacks in football as well. Um, there's a lot of people. And, and I like this idea. If you're going to play it to play, maybe, a, maybe a skinny Lamar stack with, with Andrews or Bateman would be my preferred ones. And then I would run it back. With, I would consider Slayton on the other side or Barkley. I probably don't want to do both, but Slayton does allow you to afford those expensive guys. So maybe, you know, there, there is an argument for how you can make a nice little four man stack here with the Barkley Bateman um, or sorry, Barkley, Barkley, Andrews, Slayton and, and uh, Jackson. I, I kind of like that four man. So I, I'm going to, I'm going to highlight that one. All right. Let's uh, let's talk. Let's move on to the next one. Um uh, I just jumped over. To so, my- so, so the next game is, is Tampa Pitt, and as I mentioned uh, uh, before last week, I'm like, uh, you know, they they brought Kenny Pickett in for the second half against the Jets. And I'm like, okay, guess what you get next? You get at Buffalo. Welcome to the NFL. And then you get Tampa, like it literally back to back. And it's uh, listen, that's uh, that's that's really throwing them to the wolves. Uh, good luck, can I tell you? Yeah, uh, pretty, I'm pretty unlucky. And and, and by the way. I know this sounds horrible to say because you know, like they just got killed and they threw the ball fifty he times. He made some good throws. No, he was he, good. I thought. And also, like he moved well. Like they were after him so fast. He started. Yeah. It was literally out of the shotgun snap. After running five yards to my to my right, you know, I, that's the was one game I actually watched some pieces of. And um, man, yeah. I'll tell you, he's he's he's. I hear everything you're saying. I, I'm there's going to be a slate this year where I think a Steelers stack is going to win a tournament for somebody because of how cheap the receivers are. So what do you want to do with this yeah. game though for this week? Um I mean it's nothing. I mean, I don't know. You want to play Fournette again? I don't, I don't know. You want to play this Tampa? I th- I think this, by the way, I do think I do think that Pittsburgh is very live against the spread in this game. Me too. Uh this ex- I mean, I just been following football since I'm two years old. And these do you, do you remember Pittsburgh ever being an eight-point dog at home? I don't remember. No. I don't think no. I've ever seen it before. 
No. And, and the last time Pitt was at home, they had the terrible loss to the Jets. You know, they're, they're – listen, and, and well, for all I say about Tomlin, as I mentioned, the team always tries. You know, they, they listen, they had no shot last week, whatever. Like anybody's got a shot going into Buffalo without – Makes the, you, your defense makes two huge plays and puts them at thirty yeah. long. One from the two yard line, one from the fifteen I mean, yard line, and you hit a you hit a seven eighty five yarder and a ninety eight yarder. Great, ninety eight yarder into the wind. I mean, into the can't. wind. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's tough. That's a backbreaker. That's, that's rough. That's, <laughs> yeah. that's rough. That's rough business. But um, I think I think they can give Tampa some problems here. Um, and I think I think if people maybe maybe that's what's going to happen. Maybe maybe Tampa ends up chalky. Because the Pittsburgh defense is probably going to rate to be pretty poor. Um, oh, and and, we, and again, I think the Pittsburgh defense being poor is is a misnomer. <laughs> right. Um, and and I will also say that that Buffalo last week is going to be skewing that performance. Is going to skew those stats for like the next six weeks because they right. put up a put up a ton. Um, so may, maybe the maybe the takeaway from this game is to fade Tampa. That that'll be my takeaway from this. game. Yep. Um... I, I I think Tampa is, I mean, it's obviously we know where the ownership's going to go in the one game that we, that we know that's coming up. Um, but I do think Tampa will get some ownership, like you said, and I have no problem with like, if it was me, I'm going one of like Godwin Fournette are my two favorites from Tampa. If I had to pick somebody, um, I, I don't mind your guy break here. Um, uh, you know, he's the target. He there before. Yeah. Not, I'm not my favorite, but a high scoring game where maybe you get a little bit or, a, you know, a team that's projected to score a lot of points. I'm going to keep looking at this George Pickens because I think he's really talented. And we see this all the time with Pittsburgh. I just uh, for, unfortunately for them, they haven't found anybody who could get, get, get to these guys the ball. Maybe now they have a guy who's going to start getting them the ball a little bit. And the way you used to beat Tampa was to, 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 to beat them through the air. Really hard team to run on. So it has me off of a guy like Najee Harris. But I am open to all the Pittsburgh receivers here. And even though it's a good defense overall, they're facing and it's Kenny Pickett and all the things it, it's enough. So to where I might consider making like a lot, one lineup with a, with a picket to, uh, to, to, to Pickens, picket to Pickens and running it back with, with one of the things from the, on the other side. And then you can spend up elsewhere because that's a really cheap when you get, it only costs 9.8 for your quarterback and your number one wide receiver um, or your, your favorite wide receiver or Deontay Johnson play Deontay Johnson. I'm never going to argue against playing Deontay Johnson. The guy gets 7 million targets every week. Hasn't had the big game yet. Uh, I, I actually think he's maybe he's the best play on this in this game. I mean, how many targets can he get and how can they keep missing him so much? I mean, five, five catches out of 13 targets. He's had 10 or more targets in four out of the five games this year. He's 5,700. You're not going to find that kind of value for other receivers. Yeah, maybe it'll be hard for them to score. I'm going to bet they do it enough to where one of these receivers comes in play. So I'm just going to sort of circle the Pittsburgh receivers as potential value, um, even though it feels kind of weird. And that also is going to open Pickens, pick it up because Pickett could have put up only 20 this week. And then you could stack the hell out of the Buffalo KC game um, because you played a really cheap quarterback with one really cheap receiver. Um, anyway, I think it's a, I think it's a game that, that might be more interesting than than, than people think. Now All we're right. going to talk about the worst uh, the worst quarterback in the NFL, and I'm not talking about Matt Stafford, <laughs> by the way, although he's looked pretty close to it. Um, uh, do you want? Can I, can I go real quick on this one? Go for it. I, I don't. I, it, they would be really smart to get to get uh, Baker Mayfield out of here for good. Obviously, he's been. I don't even think it's there's anybody close. He's been significantly the worst quarterback in the NFL, um, and, and it just an he's just atrocious. It's not even just he can't hit open receivers. They don't, it's just that he can do nothing right. So even if it's PJ Walker, um, no matter who it is, I'm going to be into the Rams defenses and and I don't care about spending up for it. I think that this is a spot where I'm expecting like six or seven sacks. Um, and then the only way they can get around that is if they try and dump the ball off to McCaffrey every time, which they'll try to do, the Rams will be ready for it. Um, I don't love this. There's, I, as I said, the Rams have a real offensive problem. The only thing in this game for me is that I think that, you, and then you have the cheap defense on the other side. I think both defenses are in play because of how bad the quarterbacks have been. And I also think Carolina's defense is much better than people realize because they're always on the field because Baker Mayfield can't stay on the field. Um, one of these days uh, when we get, when we get Sam Darnold in there, I'll be playing DJ Moore every week at 5,100. Are you, I mean, it's a ridiculous price for his talent level, but really hard without an adequate quarterback getting you the ball, especially, you know, it's not no easy picnic against the Rams either. Um, but I don't really have anything I love from this game. What I would point out is that if you think if you're playing that they're going to play it from ahead or whatever, 
They're going to use one of Akers and Henderson. They're both super cheap. I think it's going to be Akers again on the ground, Henderson through the air. Um, I, 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 this is a stay away game. I just want to highlight that both defenses are my priorities in terms of defenses on the slate. I think the Rams win at 20 to nothing. <laughs> uh, like literally exactly 20 to nothing. Maybe 27 to nothing. Um, I don't think Carolina scores in this game. I think that the Rams are very live for multiple pick sixes, multiple strip sack fumbles. I think at 4,100, I think that's that's really cheap for this spot. Uh, they, they have a combination of a, a team that had already given up on their coach, and now the coach is fired, and, and now you have P.J. Walker in there. As but Listen, as bad as uh, as bad as uh, what you might call it, as bad as uh, Baker is, uh, you know, P.J. Walker is, you know, this worse. Um, now, again, the only thing I would say is, is usually teams tend to uh, respond to, you know, to new coaches, at least for a little while. Mm -hmm. uh, but listen, I mean, I, I mentioned this, uh, I mentioned this last week. Um, uh, uh, the Rams have nothing, have, have difficult schedules coming up. And Dallas last week, I thought was a game that they really, that was a game they really could have used, you know, because because the, the easy games are not coming too often. And that was kind of a middling game that I thought they really could use a win there. And this this this, this I think they're going to they're going to put it to them. I really do. I think they're going to they're going to do whatever it is, it is, which means in Ram speak, probably running it 50 times or whatever. Um, they'll probably get a cup of touchdown that won't be enough to pay off his salary. Um, I'll tell you who they do, who I do like, like pretty much every week for the Rams nowadays is Higby. Um, yeah. it seems like the, between him and, and cup, they're like two very safe places place to throw the football. Um, I agree. That's what, how much that's what you want with Stafford in some place safe to throw the football. Um, so I, I think that Higby is probably my favorite, my favorite offensive player. I mean, I'd like to say Cam Akers, um, but it's just so hard to be yeah, yeah. able to run it all. Yeah. Um, so I like, I like Tyler Higby, I guess. Tyler Higby in the defense as my favorite players. Yeah. Um, I like, I, the I want to, I want to pair, compare, I want to pair Tyler Higby with Travis Darno. That's usually has good, good correlation because he just did a home run. I, oh. I, <laughs> Damn it. Wait. Okay. That's at least not as bad for me, but okay. Um, is it, what is it? Three? Is it five? Nothing. What is the score? Wait, hold Two on. Two on one Philly. Two one. Okay. It's not that bad. It's, uh, I can survive. Okay. So, all right, so Arizona. Right, so State. here we go. So, so if you didn't like all that, you get the next two games. <laughs> this is where it's at, right? The last two. Go ahead. Start off with Arizona Seattle. All right. Well, Dome, Arizona. Who would have thought I would say this? But Seattle, you know, like these are these are these are these are teams that you could that can that can do some stuff and can give up points and and away we go. Right. Uh, we still don't have Hopkins back for Arizona. Um, but Kyler Murray is doing, doing very, very well. They really were competitive against, against Philadelphia right down to the end. Um, and what did he miss a field goal at the end or something like that? Or something? I forget what. Yeah. They, 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 and then they, 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 he slid and they said first down at the stadium. So he thought they had a first down and didn't realize that oh, he, right. and he spiked the ball and it, it just, the whole thing was a mess. Yeah. But they didn't have to miss the field goal. Um, no, he didn't. They still don't have to miss the goal. <laughs> but true. so, so the one thing I have noticed, and I said this going into that that game also, is that Arizona has this reputation for for putting up all these for playing all these wild games. But this this season, except for like the first two games, it's not been the case. You know, like against the Rams, thirty two total points. Carolina, forty two total points. Against Philly, who is like the highest scoring team in football or whatever. I'm making that up too, but whatever. 37 total points. I mean, it's not exactly what you think with Arizona. So uh, I'll just kind of leave it at that. Um, however, uh, the usual issues arise with Arizona. It's like, who do you play if you want to stack them? Uh, not to say you have to, but Rondell Moore again, 4,200 would be the place I'd probably want to go. Um, and then on the Seattle side, and we talked about this offline, I mean, Geno Smith. What can, I, what can you say? I mean, you know, he's, he's he put an incredible freaking pass right into the to I was to lock it like near the end, and he's making, it, yeah. he's making throws, and he's got two freaking receivers who are 
who are just, you know, just mega targets. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think that this is an ownership situation. You know, if, if this becomes the, the, the game that everybody targets, I might, I might end up fading just because of what I said about Arizona in general. But it's kind of hard to ignore what Geno Smith's been doing, you know. So, so Geno to Metcalf, Geno to Lockett, Geno to both of them. Um, but this is, is going to be probably the chalk, I think. So this guy is really good. Is he going to be chalkier than the, the next game? Well, I'm saying – I'm talking about the running back. Oh, no, no. I, th- I thought you meant the chalk. I'm sorry. I'm talking about this play. Um, yeah, Kenneth Walker, yeah. Kenneth Walker Talented guy. looked really good. And Penny is out. So – and he's 5,400. And it's against Arizona. So yeah. this is this is going to be the running back of the week. I don't yep. know if he's uh, – he's got to be probably higher on – he's probably a better – is he a better player than Jeff Wilson? Maybe. <laughs> probably Maybe. not better than Stevenson. Yeah, or – yeah, right. And who's be- – who's be- but then again, at the end of the day, you're going to look at matchups, and the Walker against Arizona is going to look a lot more appealing than, than the Stevenson against Cleveland, even though, like you said, Cleveland really doesn't stop the run. But still, Cleveland still has this reputation for, like, they're at home and the dog pound and, and all this stuff, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't know. I think all three of these guys, but this Walker dude, he's going to end up, uh, he's going to be popular. He's going to end up popular. Maybe, maybe for good reason. So yeah, uh, I, I definitely like a whole bunch of pieces. For this. Yeah. I mean, look, Kyler has been throwing the ball more than I've ever seen him throw the ball. And, and Marquise Brown has been just targeted like absolute crazy, like, like, like crazy this year. Um, and I still don't know if I'm going to get to him, but I'm open to it. I'm open to all three of the top receivers, Metcalf, Lockett, Brown. Uh, I will also focus on, on Rondale Moore as a value. I felt like his week last week could have been even bigger than it was. And they definitely tried to get him involved, uh, eight targets. And I, I will be happy to take that shot against Seattle. I uh, also like Zach Ertz here, uh, 10 targets last week, three games over, over 10 targets or 10 targets or more the season, double digits in every game. Um, I think he's the priority tight end guy for me here. I think that, if there was ever a game, I'm keep waiting for Noah Fant to have a big game. Boy, this this would be a good spot against Arizona, who doesn't cover the middle very well. Um, uh, but I like I, I like this game. I don't know where I'm going to end up going with it. I, and I, Kenneth, Ken, so the priorities would be in, in order for me. I guess would be Kenneth Walker, uh, Rondale Moore, Tyler Lockett, Metcalf, then Brown, um, and then you get into the quarterbacks. Uh, why why wouldn't Gino be? I, I used to think he didn't have the, the full ceiling. Uh, I'm going to take that statement away. He's been really good even when he hasn't. He's 5,700. I think this is a very interesting game to stack, but it's going to be popular. Um, it's just going to be it's going to be t- tough to figure out where all the ownership goes between that game and then the next game we've got coming up because that's going to be where most of the ownership is on this slate. So don't feel great yeah, if you're winning all the money at, 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 at 4 Eastern. I'll tell you, I'll tell you something. I don't want to say shame on the NFL, but how on earth is this like not some either Sunday night game or Monday night game? I mean, for real. I hear I mean, you, but like I think that it's such an obvious. Well, they play they play again, don't they? I think they do. No. Oh, they don't. Okay. Um, well, okay. I mean, it's a legitimate question. I I don't understand the deals they have with those things for the most part. I felt like they tried to. I mean, Casey's been on on. I think they've been in prime time every game but one so far this season. Uh, I guess so. You got to give everybody a shot. But still, though, this would be the one you'd think would be the, I mean, it's the biggest one, right? It's the biggest game of the season. You have the number one and two ranked teams by everybody's standards. You have the best game from last season in the postseason. I mean, what are we doing here, Sheets? Because this, I mean, this game could go just. Well, yeah, I guess, their logic, I, I, guess their log, I guess their logic is they're going to be showing this in the AFC Championship game anyway, like later on. So, right, right. Uh, right. They, they, they don't want to put it there. I'm able to boost the ratings at four o'clock. I mean, who knows? Um, so here's, first of all, I do have actually an opinion on this. And I, again, you know, I never really bet sports like, like straight up or whatever. I do have an opinion on this game. Um, and, and this is just based on my observations of games like this in the last like three years or so. I like, um, and cause you could do this now. I like under in the first half of this game. Um, I, fi- I find that in these, these types of games with these big monster teams with all these offenses back and forth, that the first half is usually more of a feeling out, like, um, you know, just slow, methodical, moving down the field if possible uh, type of game. I've, I've actually seen in games like this, like they, the teams play even conservatively, like they'll, they'll punt on fourth and one when you wouldn't think so, right? 
And then in the second half, it all goes freaking to hell. It all goes ballistic, and they end up like 70 points or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. But I do think that that at least for the first half of this game, and by the way, if you thought that you were, you know, if you had a big score going into this game, and then like even after the first half, oh, I'm I'm safe. No, it's it's just not going to be because because if that game's close, or even if it isn't, you know what I mean? Like going into the second half, that game is going to just it's kind of it's just kind of forced to deliver, you know. Uh, But Buffalo, I mean. Nobody could stop them, and KC honestly can't stop anybody. If, if you want to know the truth, um, Buffalo has a good defense, but you just really can't stop KC when they're when they're humming. Um, so I think that uh, you know the the easier the easier side of this, in my opinion, is Buffalo. Um, I, once again, we're looking to see if 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 McKenzie is in. If McKenzie is out, I can't see any reason why Shakir isn't in play at thirty seven hundred again. Uh, Gabe Davis, I'm not going to model for, you know, the way he ran last week. Uh, I think 6,500 might be a little expensive. I don't know, but, but Diggs remains in play. Um, I, you know, Allen, I don't care what, I don't care what his price is. You know what I mean? Like he just, he just, he's just going to get there every week. That's the way it is. Um, and then on the other side of this KC, um, Kelsey, Kelsey, I mean, you want to talk about efficiency? He had like five catches, like eight touchdowns last night. I don't know what the hell that was. And he only had like he had like no yards either. It was a really. Weird I know, game. I know. Um, I do think that it's obviously easier to find guys to play on Buffalo. Uh, I guess on the Kansas City side, if you ask me now, I, I, like seven days from when it starts, I guess, I guess Valdez Scanley at forty five hundred. Yeah, so so that was my question for you. If you're going to consider like Shakir, why wouldn't you consider as as a, as a number four receiver? Why wouldn't you consider uh, Hardman, MVS, uh, way ahead of that guy, guy who's they're not that different in well, price. I thought, I thought he was the third. I thought he was the third guy. Um, well, you have McKin. If, if I'm saying if McKenzie's back, and even if McKenzie, oh, I'm, not, I'm just saying if he's out. That was well, awful. if Dawson Knox is back, that's another big thing, though. That, oh, right, that's you know, right. That makes another, that's another. It's another place for targets to go. So I just feel like I actually like the value in speculating on it for the Chiefs, even though it's hard to it's hard to do. You know, um, okay. I like the I, I like the Chiefs. I like MVS here. Um, I'm going to keep playing him. Okay. And uh, he's, he got, he got the work last night. Didn't quite get the big, big game, but you know, had to, you know, what do you have? Seven catches uh, last night, uh, six catches on eight targets for 90 yards. Um, so it was right around there. I could see this. I mean, this is, this game could go nuts uh, a little bit. Um, I think CEH is in play. They used him a lot more this year at a down game and people will be off of that. I have no problem going back to him here. Juju is hard for hard for me to do because I just don't see it working very much. <laughs> um, I keep seeing them try to get him the ball, but yeah. it's not says it hasn't really had that spot, but he is 5,200. So he's going to have to be considered. Like you said, but even still Shakir is going to have to be in, in consideration anyway. Um, the question is, will Gabe Davis score five touchdowns again, like he did in the championship game against them? <laughs> um, put up the biggest game. I think of any time, any receiver we've had in the, since the, in the whole time I've played, maybe the biggest game anybody's ever had actually. Uh, since I was playing in the, in the AFC champion or whatever, the AFC divisional round. Um, yeah. I like everybody in this game. It's, it's, uh, it's going to be mixing and matching a lot of them. Uh, I like, you know, I, I'm going to go with some double tight end sets with Kelsey and Knox. Um, and, you know, that way it sort of evens it out a little bit more. And for what it's worth, well, I, I love Mahomes, And in my opinion, he's the better player. Uh, I will always take Josh Allen over Mahomes around the same price in the same matchup or yeah. in a, in any similar matchup, just because, the rushing upside and more importantly, the touchdown rushing upside is there um, combined with the, the big playability. I think it's hard for me to ignore that. So I like a skinny stack with Josh Allen with one of Diggs or Davis or Knox. Maybe you could include one of those guys, two of those guys, like one of those guys and Knox. And then I like uh, MVS. I sort of like Edward Tillaire and I like Kelsey on the other side. So I'm going to be mixing and matching those guys. So go, so going back, um, I think that if I had to re revisit my, my takes here, I think that the Miami Minnesota game is certainly logical. I think the Green Bay Jet game is 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 sneaky. I think the Saints game could be good, and I'm I, I might end up changing my I might end up with this Giants thing. Uh, it's possible, and then the later games, uh, I have no interest in the Rams that whole game, uh, and these last two are obviously both. In play. Yeah, my fa- I mean, my favorites are the, the chalky ones are the Buffalo, KC, Arizona, Seattle. Um, I really like the Baltimore. I really like Lamar because of the pivot off of the other top quarterbacks this week. 
Um, I'm curious where the ownership ends up, but I really like Lamar this week to either Andrews or Bateman running it back with Slayton as a cheapo. Then you can, you can still semi, you can, you know, pseudo stack the, the other pieces in Buffalo KC. Um, and uh, I like the jet, the jets and Packers as of right now, though I'm a little worried about that one. I'm probably going to end up coming off of that one later and you're going to try and find guys you can get a little bit different with. So, it, you know, sometimes it's just a two V two pivot, even if you're within the games that you like, cause it is going to be a pretty chalky, pretty chalky uh, day in terms of where the ownership goes. I'm guessing that Buffalo KC, Arizona, Seattle just dominate the ownership game, but there are some, some values out there. Knox, I mentioned um, uh, MVS, even Shakir, if you, if depending on what happens, but even still, I don't think it's like the worst thing to take a shot on, on him at 3,700. Um, and then you've got a bunch of like, I, I'm probably going to be spending that low, that low tier of running back, the Stevenson hall, uh, Mostert, yeah. that, that, that sort of range um, and Walker. Um, that's sort of my, my early look at the builds, um, but it should be fun. We'll see what happens throughout the week and who's injured and who's actually playing. Cause that might open up some more value, which would only make uh, Buffalo KC more popular, but uh, I'm looking forward to it. It's, it should, should be another fun week. Anything else? You right. So you'll, you'll, you'll uh, probably see another video, I guess with Rodian and Bobby at some yeah, point. And then also probably with, uh, probably with the whole gang, to be honest with you, um, probably with uh, everybody. Yeah. And uh, I'm probably not going to be, I'm, I actually, there's a chance that I could actually get there. 11 a.m. Sunday. Yeah. I, I mean, if you can't do it, you can do it, but you know. No, I'll be in, I'll be in Virginia, but, but, uh, but on Sunday, my, my only, all I got going Sunday, we're playing golf at like one. So mm. we'll see. Maybe we'll see. Hmm. All okay. right, we have it. Good luck to everybody. Uh, and uh, hopefully somebody takes something down this week. Uh, again, there'll be more videos to come. So this is just a first look. Good luck, everybody.